Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all everywhere should repent, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Guess who? podcast i think it's awesome i don't know about you if you don't like it let me know uh i think it's pretty cool kind of gets me pumped up to get here to talk to you and to share with you what's on my heart i hope that you're having a blessed day i hope that you're encouraged by what i'm about to say to you right now i am personally in my studies in acts chapter 17 and 18 and acts chapter 17 is mostly known famously known for paul's sermon on mars hill specifically in verses 22 to 34 I want to begin in verse, uh, let me see, 23 of Acts chapter 17. He's speaking to the men of Athens. Um, He says in verse 22, I observe that you are very religious in all aspects, in all respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Paul says to them, What therefore you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Verse 24. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all life and breath in all things. Verse 26. And he made from one every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and their boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, as even some of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. That's what the poets who the Apostle Paul was talking to, poets were known for saying this quote, for we also are his offspring. Anyway, verse 29, Being then the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and thought of men. Verse 30 and 31, Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all everywhere should repent, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Now, after Paul says this, it's interesting what happens, and it's and it's a typical it's something that typically happens today as well. Verse thirty-two. Now, when they, the men of Athens, had heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer, but others said. And they're speaking to the Apostle Paul. We shall hear you again concerning this. So Paul went out there, out of their midst. Verse 34, But some men joined him and believed, and then others didn't. Some people didn't like the thought of the resurrection being a legitimate thing. They heard this, and they're like, oh, Okay, whatever. But some were intrigued by Paul's message. You will have people in this world today who, after you share with them about Jesus, they will sneer at you, especially when you throw in the resurrection in there. But then there are those who are attentive, who will be drawn to God through the gospel. Now in chapter 18 of Acts, (laughs) verse 5 to 6, the Apostle Paul, is he's entered Corinth, and the scriptures say this. Let me actually back up to verse 4. He says, well, the book of Acts says concerning Paul, and he was reasoning in the synagogue every Sabbath and trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. But when Silas and Timothy came down to Macedonia, Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Verse 6, And when they resisted and blasphemed, He shook out his garments and said to them, 
your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean. From now on, I shall go to the Gentiles. There were so many people 2,000 years ago. You can you can look at all the biblical prophets in the Old Testament and the Apostle Paul, whatever. So many people were warning Israel to repent of their sin. Paul the Apostle was clear with people. God has appointed one man. One man who he will judge the world in righteousness through. And that's the man, Jesus Christ. And he's proven this by raising him from the dead. But these people who rejected what Paul said, Paul does not treat that. Paul does not treat their rejection as something that is light. He does not treat their rejection as something as, oh, okay, well, you have your truth and I have my truth. You go believe what you want to believe and I want to believe what I want to believe and it's okay. We'll all get to the same destination, whatever. No, he does not treat it like that. Listen to his words in verse 6. Your blood be upon your own heads. Your blood be upon your own hands. Or your own heads. I want you to think about that. I want you to let those words sink in. Because when you come into contact with people who you know aren't a Christian, I want you to think of these words in which the Apostle Paul spoke to these people. Your blood be upon your own heads. Without Christ, people are doomed spiritually and even physically. Without Christ, Paul views this this as a terrifying reality within the life of a person who rejects the gospel. When a person rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul would tell them, your blood be upon your own heads. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the one and only means in which we as people, we as the human race, can be connected back to our Creator. There is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. Some people don't like hearing this because they want to be their own God, or, let's be fair, Acts chapter 17. There are some men who are trying to worship God, but they don't know who they're worshiping. So the Apostle Paul comes upon the scene. He's like, okay, well, you're this God you're worshiping in ignorance, let me proclaim to you who the real God is. And he, and he begins um, talking to them by saying, you know, God being the Lord in heaven of this earth does not dwell in temples made with hands. And then eventually he gets to the fact that, that Jesus is the one through whom God will judge the world in righteousness. Your blood be upon your own heads, is what the Apostle Paul says to, to these men, and would say to anyone today who rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news about Jesus Christ, is that it is finished. He has paid for our sins. He was. He died on the cross, he was buried, he rose again on the third day for our justification, to get us right with God. This makes me think of Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says, the wages of sin is death. Yes, if you're a Christian, you've heard that over and over probably. If you haven't, well, that's kind of odd. I don't understand what church you're going to, whatever. You should have already heard this. For the wages of sin, the fruit of sin, the result of sin is death. There's going to be a day that you die. And it's because of sin. But also, there's spiritual death because of sin. But guess what? The free gift. I want you to circle this, that word free within your Bible. Because that's what uh, the scriptures call the gift of God. Free. It's free. You take it. You receive it by faith. You don't work for it. You don't, you don't maintain it by good works, whatever. It's a free gift of God. 
And this free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Your blood be upon your own heads, you who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that may sound harsh to people, and I'm not trying to be harsh. However, I'm not looking to be popular. I'm not looking to make people feel good. This is God's word, and this is God's mean of get, means of getting people right with him. It is through Jesus Christ. It is through faith in Jesus Christ, apart from any work that you do, period. It's solely by faith. It's by grace through faith, apart from your works, period. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. I want you to think about this when you go about your day, your day-to-day walk with God, when you see people, when you know of people who have either rejected the gospel or people who don't know the gospel or people who are searching for God or people who are worshiping an unknown God. And you know this. Let us pray that God will help us to remember the words of the Apostle Paul. Your blood be upon your own heads. Those who are without Christ, who reject Christ, who reject the gospel. This is not good. There is only good news, spiritually, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.